Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to do a quick look at Calculate Linux. Uh, this is the one I did an install video the other day, and there was a couple things that just couldn't get working by the end, and so I kind of like, eh, done with it, not gonna work with it. Well, I had a couple other little things to try, and uh, it took me about five times installing it to finally get the thing to where I needed it to go. Uh, but I ended up getting the thing working and set up right, and so I think we're going to go ahead and run it and uh, replace Arch with it uh, sometime in the next couple of days. And so ultimately the thing that I ended up doing is what was happening is once it got installed and then you're running the updates, it needed to do a gigabyte of updates. And I believe I had the latest distro. So it's kind of crazy. Maybe I didn't have the latest distro. I don't know. But it needs a gigabyte of downloads and then the screensaver, you know, times out because you're not sitting there wiggling the mouse every couple minutes and then it would lock out. So if I were installing on real hardware, you can recover by going into your Alt F2 uh, and then logging in and getting your desktop back that way. But since I'm running it on a virtual machine, it's not as quite as predictable doing that. Usually times hitting that key function is going to go into the host system, not the guest system. And so what I ended up doing is installed this distro and then turned off the screensaver and then let all the updates run. And then I went through and updated it again. And once that happened, then I was actually able to install software that I needed to, insta uh, to install. So we are going to run Calculate Linux, but today we are going to do a quick look at the distro itself. So uh, here is their page, which is calculate-linux.org. This is a Russian installer of a Gen 2 uh, kind of a customized thing. So Gen 2, of course, is, it is certainly one of the most difficult Linux distros to work with. Now, once you get it installed, it is generally one of the more stable ones. No distro is 100% stable 100% of the time on all hardware. But when you have a good Gen 2 build, it works very well. And that is why your Chromebooks are at, is actually a customized Gen 2. Well, Calculate Linux is also a customized Gen 2. This is a, this is a Russian uh, application, uh, a Russian uh, distro. And what their goal is here is twofold. They kind of wanted to get in and produce an enterprise stable situation where it has a server, roaming profiles, and workstations. In other words, take care of that corporate end of Microsoft and have an open source Linux distro instead of the Microsoft portion of the distro. So that's really what we are looking at. And uh, we are looking at uh, the desktop today, which is just basically the part for any random basic user. And uh, what I found is that uh, of all of the, I mean, I haven't looked at a ton of Gen 2s. My personal favorite was Sabayan. Uh, it just worked great out of the box. This one here, it was fairly easy to install, but I couldn't get any software installed on it the first time. And so I got that situation resolved. And so we're going to do a quick look at it. And then sometime in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to install that on the media PC. And then we'll get a chance to poke around a little bit. Now you can, uh, when you go to download it, you have a variety of different options. Uh, we have the KDE, we have Cinnamon, LXQT, Mate, XFCE. And then there's XFCE Education. I'm not sure what the difference is there. And then you'll see that there's some servers and then there's some from scratches. So I'm doing the KDE because I like Plasma and there's always a little bit of uh, instability that you will occasionally find inside of Plasma. And so one of my viewers suggested that this might be the most stable version of Plasma you're going to get. And so I'm going to run this on the media PC and see if it solves those problems of stability. Who knows? Maybe I'll find an amazing plasma build that seems to have all the bugs worked out. I don't know. But let's go ahead uh, with that and we will jump on into the machine and we will take a little tour through it. Okay, so here we are logged into the desktop and uh, I have not done anything to this except add a GUI package manager, which I really like. And I installed Evolution just because that was kind of one of those packages I needed to install. There's a few more that I will probably need that we'll look into at another time. Uh, but for the most part, we get logged in here and uh, we get a basic you know, Plasma login screen, hit the login button. It takes about 35, 40 seconds to get logged into the system. So on default at the very top, we have this panel. We have a workspace switcher here. Um, I don't generally use those, but uh, it is there on default. 
we have this icon here drops down a list of your folders for your home directory, which is kind of cool. Of course, we also have the list here. Uh, like Plasma on default, single clicking to open things in the in the uh, icons, uh, no matter where you're at, single click opens it, not a double click. Uh, if you want to change that, you can. It's in the settings, mouse settings. We also have up here a power switch. Uh, this locks the screen. Of course, we have our clock set up. Everything on this is actually uh, pretty nice. Now, the other thing that we have by default, uh, throw your mouse on the bottom of the screen, we have a dock. Uh, this was one of the curious things I had mentioned before is that our web browser, it, this is, it's not the nightly Firefox build. It is like the, uh, the water fox type logo. It says Aurora, which is one of the web browsers, but if we actually click it, it actually is the Firefox nightly. So I'm not quite sure what is up with that, um, but we, are, we do have the Firefox nightly, which basically means you are always running the absolute latest testing branch of Firefox by default out of the box. A little bit curious. Uh, we also have uh, Kmail, which I like Kmail, but it's a pain to set up with multiple email addresses. So I don't use it a lot. I have it set up on one of my systems. Um, I generally use Evolution, which I have a roaming profile that goes around. So that's what I use. Uh, Conversation is an IRC, IM. We have LibreOffice. I want to see what the LibreOffice looks like, uh, which version we have and which, um, you know, are all the plugins working and intact. That's one of the things I found on my, uh, my current system is that not all my plugins are set up. Not that I use my system for a lot of writing anyway in this case. So we generally have some of the absolute latest software. This one we don't yet. Uh, we are still running 6.1.4.2. And let's go ahead and see if we have a spieling checker. So it does appear we, we have a spieling checker. Let's go ahead and fix the spieling there. And we have our synonyms installed. So we pretty much have everything that we need. It's not the absolute latest. Um, I believe maybe if I ran another update, I might get it. Uh, some people have said it's already there. As far as applications on default, uh, I will point out the only two applications I installed and why. Uh, this is the basic menu, which allows us to search for things. Um, interesting. We do have a customized Firefox thing there. I don't know. All right. Anyway, uh, we have a uh, we have our basic menu here. Now, this will allow us to change the menus because Plasma allows us to do that. We have GIMP, um, a KDE image viewers, PDF viewers, a scanning tool. We have the web browser, Kmail. Uh, there's a torrent application. Multimedia, we have Clementine, which I, I like Clementine. It's pretty cool. Uh, SM Player. SM Player is kind of becoming, I think, one of the one of the newer ones that's kind of uh, competing with VLC. Um, I installed Evolution. This was kind of my test. This is the one test application I was not able to, to install earlier, and I was able to get this working. And uh, I know somebody asked me which version of this. And so I went through and set up a blah fake email address, and it is running 3.24.6. Okay, K address book, uh, LibreOffice suite. And I also, let's see, there's the updating tools. Um, Porthole is the other application I installed. This gives us a GUI package manager, and then we have basic utilities in here and not much else. So that's kind of what we have by default. I accidentally clicked the web browser to open. So by default, everything seems to work okay. Now, of course, uh, we have the ability because it's uh, Plasma to edit all these. You can right click and unlock the widgets. This is gonna be specific to this desktop. Now that the widgets are unlocked, I can do things like look for alternatives for different panels and things like that. What alternatives are to this? There's an icons only task manager and a windows list, all right. Uh, let's go ahead, though, and uh, relock the widgets. Of course, my right-click me right menu, we have a lot of features. This is why I really like Plasma. It is just, it's really beautiful. Um, I would, uh, when I install this on my media PC, I'm going to change some things around. I don't really care for this layout, but that's all stuff that's easy to fix. I'm not too worried about that. As far as uh, configuring the desktop, we can go down there. We have a variety of different things um, to pick from here in our wallpapers. Ooh, I like that one. That's nice. Let's see what the orange looks like. 
That's pretty sweet. All right, I like that. I'm going to stick with that for now. All right, so we can also come in here, and uh, like I said, what, to get this working, um, the first thing I did is I came into my system settings, and I went down into our screensaver, I believe. Where's it at? Uh, this is the downside of KDE is there's so many options. I think it's screen locking. All right, so I went ahead and I kicked this up to the maximum amount and I actually unchecked this uh, so that it will not lock. So in theory, I should just be able to leave this thing and it will not lock itself. So that's kind of good. So I did that first and then I went over here and I ran my Linux updater over here. And this is going to go ahead and update everything in the system. And so if I go ahead and click run, it's going to go out and it's going to see what there is to update. And there might be some things to update here. Um, I, like I said, I ran the updates on it just a couple of days ago. I think it was Wednesday I was looking at uh, looking at this. So now it's syncing the Gen 2 repository. I did find it's not particularly light on system resources. Um, let me find the uh, monitor here. Now keep in mind that the uh, updater is also running, uh, but our system load right now, we're actually on just under a gig of RAM. Uh, so Python 2, EIX update, this is actually the updater. Um, this is our update system. So these top things that are running, uh, these are, this is actually the updater system running. So you can kind of see it's, it's not super heavy. Uh, Plasma generally will run on lower end software, so that's perfectly, perfectly cool. Um, you can uh, run with that, but uh, let's go ahead and see if there's anything else in the updates. So anyway, I ran this updater, and then the next thing I did is I installed the porthole because there's times I just want to be able to search for a package. If I, if I know what the package is and I can uh, install it, I, I generally just do that through the terminal. In this case here, there's a few extra steps to go in installing the software, and I don't remember exactly what they are. I think it's a merge, maybe. Um, I think when this is done checking, we'll go ahead and, and test that without reading the documentation. Uh, there is documentation there. I was following it. It wasn't working, mostly because this, uh, this system here was... Um, was not updated and that ended up being the problem. When I got this updated properly without crashing out the system by the screensaver kicking on, that actually solved my problems. So I am gonna go ahead and give this a try. Of course, we're gonna re-theme it. I'm, the theming on this is okay, but I'm not particularly in love with it. Uh, there's slight transparencies. The blue is all right, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. If I'm gonna use KDE, I'm gonna like it, make it look gorgeous. And uh, I'm going to come back when these things are done updating. Okay, so all of the updates are completed. And so the next thing what we're going to do is just look at how you basically install software. So we're just going to boot up a terminal. Now, the way that uh, you do it without the GUI, and, and again, there was an issue initially I could not install anything until the updates were installed. Now that they are installed, I can run things. Now, you generally, I believe, need to... Um, unmask software if I'm remembering the terminology correctly and I'm not a Gen 2 guy so my apologies if I'm uh, saying that incorrectly but there is a package you can install which will do that automatically and I've done that as part of installing, installing the the uh, porthole and so now that that is done I can actually just install anything just by going into the terminal and uh, uh, let me go ahead and zoom this guy in for you guys a little bit. So just need to go into a terminal and do sudo emerge and then your package. So we'll do Cody here. This is one of the things I need to do and then enter our password. And so now it's going to double check is the uh, everything up to date and then it should be going out there. It's going to calculate dependencies and then it should actually just go ahead and install this <laughs> with hope. I did attempt to install Firefox, but since Nightly's on here, it's kind of inter uh, interfering with that. So I did a test of running um, Thunderbird instead, uh, just as the pre-test before I recorded this. That seemed to work. So now it does, uh, it does appear to be emerging various dependencies. 
it is now working and it's saying, you know, three out of six jobs complete, now four out of six jobs complete. So when this is done, we should have a functioning uh, Kodi Media Center installed on the system. Once again, Kodi is the ones that, one of the ones that I run on my system because I have a roaming profile. All I have to do is grab the uh, Kodi configuration files from my roaming section, drop it onto the computer, and then everything is set up. That's kind of part of what I did to run our um, uh, run our desktop. So there we are. We're going to go ahead and exit out of there. And now under multimedia, we should now see Kodi as a new uh, new op option here. And curiously, I think Fedora is still running a newer version of Kodi. Hmm. Pretty sure it's running the 18 um, <laughs> the 18 release candidate. Uh, so if you want the absolute latest, run Fedora. Um, but anyway, here's Cody. So uh, Cody's there. I don't care for that particular theme. Um, but I will go ahead and uh, put the Cody theme on there that I like the most when I'm running it. So uh, this is kind of, uh, this is it. So in theory, this is going to be a very, uh, very quick, very easy to use system. Uh, once I got over that barrier of getting the initial system updates in, um, so far, so good. So we're going to go ahead and run this on the media PC and see what happens. So have you used Calculate Linux or Gentoo before? Do you have any fun tips or tricks? Let us know in the comments down below. I may or may not read them. Haha. <laughs> um, but, um, no, definitely let us know what you think. And, uh, I'm looking forward to giving this one a try. I want to get back and, uh, see what a, in theory, very stable plasma is going to do. So thanks for coming along. Tell me what you think of Calculate Linux in the comments down below, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for making it to the end of this Switch to Linux video. You can have a look at another video right on over here. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel or to Think Life Media, which is my own personal support page. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.